Hola, audiencia, y bienvenidos hoy di- para y, um, hoy Dímelo Cinema Club. I'm tonight's host, Jason Echoes. I am joined by a very illustrious and distinguished panel of other hosts, Dino, Michaela, JP, and Raymond. How are you guys doing this evening? Pretty good, pretty good. Sounds great. So tonight we're reviewing the 1985 foreign film, the Russian film, Come and See. Uh, I chose this movie because I'd never seen it before. It's on a lot of lists. Um, it just became, uh, it just kind of got on my radar maybe like three years ago. Um, some artists that I know recommended it to me. And then it popped up uh, like right before the pandemic. I think they were showing it at some theater in Hollywood or something like that. And with like a, you know, commentary or talk back or whatever. <clears throat> so I was interested to see it. I heard it was uh, pretty brutal and weird and um, disparaging. And it, uh, it proved to be all those things. Uh, so let's just jump straight into first impressions, shall we? Um, feel free to talk freely amongst yourselves. Let's start with the lady, Michaela. This was like, like the best way I can describe it is like when you're watching a documentary and like a wolf is eating something alive and there's like a strange beauty in it, but it's also like not something you enjoy doing, but you can't look away because there's just something so raw and primal in it. Like this is such a beautiful film and there's just so much to like see in it that's going to break your heart, make you angry, all while, like, really highlighting something that I don't think a lot of people talk about when it comes to, like, the multiple genocides of World War II and um, just how widespread and how different the violence was. Um, But I'm really glad that I watched this film, too. So that's my first impressions. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, Raymond, how about you? What, what was your first impression? My first impression was, wow, this film looks really old. And then <laughs> um, and then I was like, but it was done in 1985. Why is that? And then I was like, whoa, like the cinematography is freaking gorgeous. Like some of the most beautiful images I've ever seen, even to present day cinema. And then um, and then kind of my last first impression <laughs> was, um, was, whoa, I forgot what I was watching and this is incredibly dark and it will get worse. <laughs> okay, cool, awesome, that was it. Well, most televisions got a light setting, so you just gotta Put it up a little bit if it's a little too dark. Oh my god! <laughs> no, 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 no. The I more, uh, I agree with you know. all of that, Raymond, and uh, most of that, JP. JP, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us your first impression? Uh, we came and we saw. Ah uh, no, the last <laughs> film that we saw here that took place in 1985 was perhaps Back to the Future. And the last Soviet movie that we saw was Death of Stalin. So I figured that the Russians would have, you know, a better sense of humor. Um, God damn. Is the one word review of this fucking movie. I mean, I did say it in our pre-chats. Like, I didn't think that there'd be a film where the Soviets took the high ground. But other than that. It's, it is, you know, it's definitely tough to watch. It's, it's, I, I, I find great delight when we watch a movie (laughs) in which a director and writer just fucking hate the protagonists, you Mm. know, absolutely just hate their poor, poor asses. And we're just there for the sake and enjoyment of it. Um, That's, that's my first impressions. And also... Never once did I thought we're going into a little bit of spoiler territory right now. I I didn't think that that the ending of Deadpool two, where it ends on a literal "Will I kill baby Hitler?" joke. I never thought 
any form of cinema cinema work of art would top that. But boy, this movie this movie topped it. Uh, yeah. we got we got a, a, a raised hand here. Wait, just before we move on, I know we're just in first impressions, but there there is something yeah, that popped in. Uh oh. There, there is, um, there is a, a thought that popped into my head that I think I'm gonna forget if I wait <laughs> till later, mm-hmm. and that's that, like, you know, the writer director put the, the protagonist in, in such very, very intense situations, and when the movie ends, this major spoiler alert, but when the movie ends and it has like that one kind of title card with how many villages were destroyed, um. It dawned on me, I mean, like, I think I already knew this, but it just kind of, like, cemented it for me as an adult of, like, why the, the purpose in putting your character in situations, especially with when they come from truth, um, living in the world that we do, which is, like, post-truth, sometimes people don't believe things actually happen, and just, mm-hmm. like, how there's kind of a sense of, you know, and maybe there's a better word than this, but, like, there's a sense of pride in showing your country's history, no matter how intense or brutal it looks. And that's kind of the the sense of like, that I that I kind of walked away with was like, um, like this is our story, don't forget. And it's, and, and, and I'm putting it on my shoulders to make sure that you know. Like that's what I was thinking the writer director were telling me. Hey, I think those are uh, pretty fair observations. Um, from JP and Raymond. Uh, Dino, why don't you uh, bless us with your first impression? All right. Um, I hadn't seen this movie. I guess I've seen a bunch of different versions of the poster or the cover because, you know, being Criterion Collection and stuff like that. But I never thought, I thought it was going to be more along the line of. Um, is it the Rising of the Sun? Is that the one that we watched? The Spielberg one? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Empire, I, of the Sun, I think. Empire. Empire of the Sun. I thought it was going to be something more along that line where, like, yeah, there's some really horrible stuff, but that it was going to maybe lighten up a little bit. But I guess that's maybe for a Russian film, it's a pretty light film. Not sure. Haven't seen that many, but don't know about that. I do know that this film, Come and See, kind of makes like Das Boot and like Schindler's List almost feels like a Freddie Prince Jr. rom-com, if I'm not mistaken. Did anyone else feel that, that it's just was completely on another, um, on another uh, level of just like my, what I've noticed more in this than other kind of like war films and stuff like that, how much and focus on your mind, right? And like other ones, especially more modern and all that can make it more realistically gory and stuff like that. But this one was really, I feel like in the psyche, especially showing that from a kid's perspective. Um, so that those are the first initial thoughts that I, I just remember just kind of like, man, this is, and just hoping the whole time, like, he's going to make it, he's going to make it, right? Or like, oh, maybe he's going to, maybe he's going to run into the girl again. Oh, maybe, maybe they can, like, to that point of just like, oh, please don't let it, like, like everyone keeps getting killed, like family, you know, uncle, friend, whatever. And I'm just like, he's making just So it's pretty powerful when half the movie, I'm just like, oh, please don't happen. Please don't let anything happen to him or you know, please don't let that girl, something bad happen to her. But there was another girl that bad things happened to. So it just, it was intense, um, to say the least. But I definitely, at some point, do want to revisit this film. So that's, I put that in my first impression, just to kind of say, like, it was so powerful. And there were so many different amazing shots in it that it it just makes me want to watch it again to see kind of more of the techniques that were being used and stuff like that. And I saw the, I don't know what version everyone necessarily saw, but the Criterion Collection version that's been like remastered and cleaned and all that. And 
Ed looks amazing. I'm I was so surprised. Like I was except I was expecting like a you know a, a Cold War Russian film that was gonna be all sorts of just you know uh, hard to to see and all that. But it it was such a good restoration job that I definitely want to watch it again. So yeah, some, uh, added CGI Tie Fighters. You know, <laughs> right. I'm I'm also on, on the same mindset of like I'm gonna revisit this this film just because again some of those the, the cinematography some of the shots the way they're designed and staged and the choreography of the of the actors in them I'm just like <clears throat> bro like it just in contrast again I'm just before I forget it's just like we like I was watching something after I finished the movie I put on some random stuff. And there was like a chase scene. And I'm just so aware and conscious of the camera mm -hmm. in, a, in in the way that we do things where it's like, well, we know the character's gonna pass the camera here and we're gonna cut to where he enters in the right. next room. And it's just like this like relentless, like we are just following this character going for who knows how long. You, I, you're not certain. And I'm not gonna like show you any way of indicating that there's gonna be a cut soon. So it's just, it just makes it feel so much more in the moment and you don't know what's gonna happen yeah. and it feels more kinetic and frenetic, like all the things, anyway. All, all I'm getting here is that artists are a bunch of sadistic freaks. <laughs> so, and I'm sure the audience will be with me on that one. <laughs> Because I more really want to revisit this film too for the same reason, like the color is beautiful <laughs> and like, like you said, like it wasn't even so much that like the the long shots that caught my attention. It's the angles, you know, like especially towards the end when you're like getting these positions where like they actually have the actors spike the cameras so many times. And I think this is one of the only films I've ever seen where an actor does that. And it didn't take like it didn't feel like yeah. a fourth wall joke. It didn't feel like they were breaking anything like the story was still so connected to the mm -hmm. point where I'm just like, how did they do that? And and the swastikas, they have plenty of angles. I'm gonna poke you. There's at least eight, I think. <sighs> but like, are you are you are, are you saying spiking the camera? Is that what you said? Well, or yeah, you, like you, where they're, they're looking directly into it, like, and there's but, like multiple occasions where different actors do that. And like, I, I know that a big part of it is like, I think they really wanted it to feel almost like a documentary on a very different cinematic scale, which is also mm -hmm. kind of a different approach to it. Like, instead of trying to make it look like cheap on purpose, like they kept the quality intense, but still had like on that, that on the boots, on the ground action that you expect from a documentary, which I don't think I've seen anywhere else. So like, right. like this is just such an incredible <laughs> film. Like I never it, thought I could feel the color green as deeply as I could <laughs> until I've seen this film. Yeah, for sure. You know, I uh, I buy every single thing you guys said. It was all very well put. Uh, I, I thought this movie was haunting and daunting. And uh, I think it was Raymond who said, it's really, really tough to watch, but almost impossible to turn away from. And there are certain shots that at first feel like this thing is like almost masturbatory. Like, like it feel like they're about to get into that territory where it's like, okay, you're holding this shot a little too long. And then it's like, oh, it's not, not too long at all. Like you're really trying to show us like some horrible stuff. And it makes it feel real the way that they decide. It, it, it's so off kilter that the cuts aren't always where you think they're going to be. And it holds a little bit longer than maybe it should. And that gives it that doc feel that it's just like a piece of reality. Um, I agree with everything you guys said. The, the, um, the, the choreography of the actors and the way they move in it is very intense and real. And it just, it just, everyone feels exhausted. Like they're in a war. You know what I mean? And I'm sure that's not a very easy thing to play, but the whole cast just feels obliterated from beginning to end of this thing. And, you start to feel exhausted watching it, you know, with them. Like, you you feel very much like a part of this thing. I feel like to watch this in a cinema, 
like you would sort of be kind of pulled into it more like you would be kind of warped into their world you know with that like light shining down on you inside a theater i did not have the opportunity to watch the um criterion remaster i, I end up watching it on uh youtube and it just seemed like maybe a, a dub of the 1984 vhs or something maybe a dvd i don't know <laughs> wasn't that great it was fine you know i still got story and stuff but i kept watching it thinking like man i I like to see a i would like to see a cleaned up version of this thing i'm sure it's beautiful and uh i'm going to revisit this movie too i would really like to see it in a cinema the next time i see it though um and i would like to see it with other people people who have seen it and people who haven't seen it because i would like to get some audience reactions like around me it's like this thing because it feels very visceral uh it, it feels like it would be very visceral to watch with an audience that, um, that, that is definitely the Soviet way, shared experiences with your comrades, yes. Is, are you being for real? No? No. Um, I, I feel like this movie should be a shared experience. There's a, there's a lot to kind of process here. And it gave me some real heavy um, All Quiet on the Western Front vibes. Mm. And oh, yeah. maybe a little bit of Empire of the Sun. And this is uh, like along the lines of uh, Grave uh, of the Fireflies. You know, this is like, you yeah. know, these kids, these children dealing with the horrors of war and, you know, kind of, you know, thinking they're making the best of it, thinking they're going to be heroes and be like the books of the heroes they read and then realize that war is not that, you know. Um, let's jump it, into like maybe characters that you guys identify with or you felt close to or connected <laughs> with when you watch this thing. Well, oh, I don't yeah. know. If you ahead, can... jump in. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, I I don't know if I like identified with any characters on any like certain level, but it's just the acting in this is some of it was very superb. Like, um, what's her name? Uh, starts with a G. La- 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 yeah, whoever played La- La- her, like, like that first scene where she's just. Like, she's so beautiful in, like, such a feral way. And I just am amazed that she was able to portray that while still having almost, like, a not quite a naive sense to her, but, like, there's just, like, this weird energy that they managed to get off of her that, like, I just found astounding. And the kid that they found, to like, the main kid, that was an amazing performance. Like, I... I be very curious to see what he ended up doing when he was older. This will come out of left field, but that that relationship that that they kind of showcase in the film, especially in the first part, reminded me a little bit of um, the relationship dynamic in Almost Famous between mm. the kid and Kate Hudson. Mm-hmm. Blanking out on the kid's name, but it kind of ha- it, to what you're saying about her her portrayal, like to me, there's these two people that she's playing i'm i i'm maybe even building story that's not there but like it to me it seemed like she had something with kind of that general lieutenant officer who's in charge and then gets left behind when he leaves and so she stays and then she she like puts on for this kid to a certain degree until they start communicating or whatnot but um Mm -hmm. It just reminded me a little bit of that, like, he sold you for a case of, for whatever, $50 and a case of beer, and then mm-hmm. Kate Hudson, like, breaks for a second and then comes back on. Um, right. There. This is I like that vibe, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely got the vibe that um, she was, you know, part of, of something um, bigger, if you will, right? Uh, yeah that you know she was either being moved around with a different you know because he even asked about like the flowers and like why she was dressed up nicely at some point and then that's where she kind of said a different name call me this so then i was like wait was there another girl in that camp that we don't know about it because she she was very put um put off when he brought up why she was dressed a certain way, who she was dressed for and all that. So I don't know if it was just kind of like, you know, young girl, war front, 
at the camp. She's going to, you know, they're going to be shacking her with whoever the higher ups are. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought was happening. I didn't think there was any question about it. Yeah, no, it was crazy because, like, even then, like, I thought it was incredible that the movie kind of straight up, like, they're already off off their fucking rockers. Like, shit hasn't hit the fan yet for them. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's definitely shit, but it hasn't, like, gone to hell yet. But everyone's already, like, on edge and, like, not all there, which made their scenes for me very uncomfortable. But, um, oh gosh, this is somewhat in jest, but not really. But I'm not gonna lie, the animals, there's a lot of use of animals in this film. And I don't mm -hmm. know if, if, if laws in Russia are laxed, but there was a few moments, especially with a certain cow, where it's like, that, that cow's acting pretty dang hard right now, ain't it? <laughs> they, they didn't kill, so I saw, uh, I saw back, um, I, I saw like an interview thing or whatever. There were apparently two cows. That's what I figured. The, I was hoping. <laughs> there, there were two cows. The because the the kid I saw an interview. I guess that was uh, Criterion Collection um, uh, DVD specials or whatever extra. And uh, he said there were two cows. One was the acting cow, and the other one was like the the. Uh, uh, what do you call it? The 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 stand-in, if you will, because he said like the there one of the cows was sick already. One of them, I guess, was about to die, and the other one was, I guess, fine. And uh, yeah, so he he was talking about how they like swapped out cows, and that yes. they apparently apparently they were using real explosions and bullets because. They tried to do just like fake, and they're like, "This looks too fake. It doesn't look right." <laughs> and so they were they apparently used real explosion and got shots, and apparently that like spooked the cows and like jumped up in the air and I guess almost landed on the kid or whatever. Anyway, so that's just sidebar of like the animal use, but they were using a lot of actual explosions and uh, gunshots. Mm -hmm. That's for crazy. notable characters, I mean, I thought, hey, there was going to be way more nudity, but I'm glad there wasn't because I, I was like, this is going to be very disturbing. But I, I did think that um, there was the <laughs> all the characters. I feel like we all got all the characters, and I think what Jason was saying was just like. Everyone was feeling it. Everyone was in the moment. Everyone was just in the thick of it, in hell. But because it might be lost on people, the one character that stuck with me is that the Nazi woman eating crab legs in the truck. Mm. I don't know. If, and then a few minutes later, spoiler alert, she's dying choking uh on the side of the road and uh you know yeah. all, all the other guys are dead and she's choking on something and it looked like the butter or whatever was like coming out of her mouth and really you know. that that's what you thought it was butter i i i had a different theory and assumption because of the medical supplies that was near her i had assumed that one, this lady either got shot or stabbed. It is now bleeding out. And that mm -hmm. in order to end it, she tried to take a cyanide pill mm -hmm. and that did mm. not work. That's what I thought was happening. Same thing. Mm. Because she was impaled on something in the car. I, I did think it was maybe poison. I have that. But at the same time, I think the the bandages, I think she was shot or there was a crash and she got all cut up and that they were going to try to patch her up maybe. And that's why her shirt was open. Oh, uh, I didn't a think breast. that was someone was trying to save her. But anyway, I mean, but either way, just the, that like, what at what point, like that, that's what, really interests me of this like film and of like potential watching again trying to figure out 
what's going through the director's mind in that it's like, oh, you know what we need while well, all these people are being murked and burned alive in this uh, building? Let's have a Nazi lady eating uh, crab legs in the car. As you life. do. It, that, it that, does seem that's... like the most Nazi thing to do, though. Well, like, like... See, like, that's what makes this film so interesting. Is like they're so brutally realistic that it almost goes into the realm of the surreal. Yeah. yeah. And like, there's like so many moments, like not just like with the cow, but like like with the crane and like the stepped on bird nest. And there's just like so many mm -hmm. very visceral, very like unconnected images that are still very much a part of the story that just like it's that but that's what makes this film so interesting is like there's just, like so many ways you can try to interpret some of these little moments to the point and all of it is just like disturbing you know not since the lighthouse has a bird made me feel that uncomfortable but... <laughs> i know i kept waiting for that crane to like oh, eat something well raven what are you gonna right. say? you're gonna say something uh yeah i was just gonna say that it is it is um kind of these like pe peculiar choices that i think like there, like when when the when the the main character and the woman that he connects with, who stays behind, um, first connect. There are some moments where I felt like this feels of a particular time in terms of filmmaking, but then mm -hmm. you contrast that with you know like what we've been talking about, like the crane, the Nazi woman with the crab legs. Um, the for me like the like the two kind of my two and I'll use favorite in quotes but my two favorite moments are the the shots of the dolls lying on the floor when he can't find his mom and mm -hmm. his sisters and then um, later on the I, I I forget what kind of animal it is but the shot over the marsupial and they're oh, the doing marsupial. stuff to the Whoa. marsupial yeah the lemur. <laughs> So the it's first just loving thing from Madagascar. Hmm. That one. Yes, it's like the uh, there's a way. It was where... our emotional support lemur, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> the emotional support lemur being, you know, uh, uh, taken advantage of or whatever. That no, I thought um... the same thing. I was like, <laughs> you stop cuddling it on that area. Just, just stop. <laughs> And it was just, it's like those moments where I just go, whoa, like, it's, this is, I, I don't I forget, the, um, is it uh, the filmmaker who did that short film um, and it's like someone's about to slice someone's eye open, but then instead of seeing the eye open, we cut to the moon and like a cloud go uh, crazy. Un, un chien on the loop. Un chien yes. on the loop. And then you're like, oh, God bless. We're not going to have to see the eyeball exploding. And then they cut back, and then you see the eyeball exploding too. And I hmm. just go, wow, way to, way to just, like, take me on a journey. And that's how I felt when I saw the shot of the dolls. I was like, I know exactly what you're telling me. And then we, and then he's like, JK, like, this is war. I'm not letting you off that easy. You're going to see it too. And hmm. so, so in that regard, I... I I just it really hit me and I can't stop thinking about it and it's I think it's incredible. Yeah, and I mean Un Chien Andalou is uh Luis Buñuel directed it and uh one of the people in it is um Salvador Dali. So it's super experimental and you know, like trying you know, and that so yeah, so it was a little more modern, but yeah, they were definitely playing with with images in another in another way for sure yeah um i think uh most war films uh kind of play with the idea of the loss of innocence uh but very few do it as effectively as this one um <laughs> no sense of innocence to begin <laughs> what is that I was, I was saying because there's no innocence to begin with. I mean, kind of, okay. like with the whole like trying to like desperately join the other men because yeah. like right. that's what you should do as a man. And when you're 14, that's a form of romanticization. And that's what I thought the whole trampling on the birds was. 
was like that was going to be he was literally walking into the moment that would destroy his childhood yeah yeah i, I thought it was him literally being like sucker punched in the face like saying welcome recruit boom because <laughs> he seemed so happy to be like yeah they're gonna take me oh my fucking face jesus <laughs> Well, and like that's part of that's also part of the innocence of like yeah. war, you know, like this whole idea of like I'm being left behind. How am I going to like prove myself as a man and like being really upset about that? And then when he finally experiences what they, it is to be part of a war, they, they literally aged him by fucking four decades like, in the span Jesus. of two days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, how do you guys think that this well okay let me touch on that bird thing real quick when i saw the bird thing i mean i guess the 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 image itself made me think okay these are like baby birds that he stepped on they maybe they fell out of a nest maybe i mean out of a tree maybe the nest was on the ground but he stepped on them maybe he killed them inadvertently but and he was so shook by that he thought it was foul and gross and like couldn't believe he had done it but then on the uh, on the other side, he, he, being a child, like, sir, you have to go out and now kill people. You have to go out and kill men, women, and children because this is a war. And he was very shook just by the little baby bird. That's how you, like, know, like, okay, the loss of innocence. But then also maybe, like, war and death are a natural part of the human experience. It doesn't feel like a natural part, but if it with I mean, the argument would be that it has always been a natural part of the human experience, you know? I mean, I'd, I'd like to argue that the fact that you see that nest on the ground, because it doesn't look like a ground species, like the baby birds mm -hmm. have like their feathers and wings. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of part of the metaphor. It's just like he's being forced into this position that he shouldn't have been in in the first place, and he's going to pay the ultimate price for it mm -hmm. inadvertently. Like, that's exactly what the entire movie does to him. Vice yeah. versa, you know. That's yeah. That's a great point. How do you guys think this film uh, stacks up against other uh, war films? Uh, I wish this had the lightheartedness of a Spielberg movie, such as Schindler's List, like Dino said in the beginning. Uh, <laughs> the the um the thing is like I think the only reason why I didn't like the movie as much was um. The gratuitous violence felt so repetitive and such overkill. I know that was the message it was trying to relay. Or it's like, like yeah, these people have gotten to a point where they don't see anyone else as equal. Like, if you are less than garbage, you are garbage. So you, you'll waste your bullets on garbage for the pure fun of it when it's already dying mm. in, in, like, a fire. And then you throw grenades as well. It started with like, grenades. It's insane, like, I even said it during the movie. It's like, then now they're just wasting shit. <laughs> but like, oh gosh, no, like, but I think Dino hit on it pretty, pretty well. I think another reason why I didn't like the film too much was it's very much cerebral and it's all about the psyche. And I don't think that meant, I don't think many films uh, that I've seen dwell too much on like the mental break. It's mostly physical and emotional, but never like, like in the mind and this film does show like, like this guy this poor fucking kid is off his rocker <laughs> well we've seen movies where like actors are like portraying the mental breakdown of war but really right. do i think we do we see it where the filmmaker decides that i'm going to focus on the tragedy of war through like the mentality of the characters and watching them break and you know extreme close-ups on their faces and watching their eyes with just like blankness you know that's uh those close-ups i haven't i mean one thing that i saw was the whoever was an interview with the photography guy talking about um uh that the director really wanted to make it as a kind of the documentary feel you know have a documentary mm -hmm. feel to it so it's yeah that's why the camera is always kind of always moving and then just has these close-ups just like we've seen and so i thought it was very interesting of like the the contrast of you know the russian military them taking pictures and then, then you even see the Germans taking pictures, right? That very iconic shot there at the end, 
where they're taking the picture, spoiler alert, with about to kill him, right? Like, I mean, what do you do if that happens to you? And yeah, and they 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 decide to walk off, and then he just collapses on the floor. I mean, you're being used like, yeah, like animals. And I don't know if that's why they were putting animals, because they're the hunting and all that. It's like you hunt an animal, and then you go and you take a picture with a dead animal and your gun and all that. So I don't know if there was that psyche in it as well. Uh, to to answer real quick, I don't know, if, uh, uh, before I forget, of stacking up to other films, one thing that I've noticed more and more, or what I appreciate, is we now, more than ever, can get our hands on films from other countries dealing with the same stuff that we've grown up seeing it. So we've seen other, you know, The Hunt for Red October or K-9 Widowmaker or all these like uh, Cold War films or World War II films uh, from the Russian perspective or the German perspective, but they're always in English, right? They're always, you know, Sean Connery playing, you know, like, uh, and so it's really interesting and I really appreciate watching these films from the actual country and from the actual historical point of view you know as much as we can start thinking like well this clearly can be used for propaganda well the same thing with a movie like pearl harbor or any movie that comes from the u.s that deals with war to a certain extent is going to be that so uh recently i've been i've seen some like chinese produced films from world war ii as well and I mean, it's so interesting just seeing what these different cultures, how they saw it, right? right. And there's, it, it makes it way more um, heart wrenching, maybe you know, because you see everyone's truth from from their perspective. You know, that, that was great insight. But now I have Harrison Ford doing a bad Russian accent playing in my head. Mm. Like, there's just a okay, little... Nine maker. Like, oh my god. <laughs> but, but, like, also what I found very interesting in this film that I don't think we see in a lot of war films is there's no heroes in this. Yeah, you there's know? no love, there's no stupid love triangles well, or anything like that. that. No, like, there's no one who's, like, like despite the horrors and despite the the maddening yeah. effects of what's going on, like we have this character who's persevering. Where no, no, like, they're not lives. persevering. They're straight up suffering. Like, they are surviving <laughs> at like the ba most basic sense of the word. Because like even Graveyard of the Fireflies, like even though it has a terrible ending, like you know, like like he's still hopeful. He's still fighting. Like nah, this kid is like. Nah. No, like after the first. There's episode, no hope at the end of the Firefly movie. No, there is none. No, there is none. But at least he tried. That poor kid but, like, tried. But there is a movie. sense of optim. Like there are moments of optimism in in Gray. Whereas like this, there's there is no ray of sunshine. Everything's yeah. rotten. Everything's going to die. You know. There's no Christian Bale naively like cheering the fucking plane up in the sky like nah that plane's death <laughs> every time you see it up in the sky it's like oh we might die <laughs> god and like that's like another very interesting thing too that i thought is like how little of like actual germans we saw until they were ready to go into that third act yeah you know like for the most part they're like this very abstract idea like they're shooting uh but we don't actually see like the individuals really um, and then when we finally do we just we finally see the yeah. like extent of how they're destroying everything mm -hmm. and like i was trying to say earlier like it's a side of genocide that i don't think is portrayed very often because like when we talk about disasters like of the holocaust like the reason why that was so terrible was how um much like a factory it felt whereas this there's like something very primal and organic to yeah. it in the way that they were approaching it that kind of is very visceral Cause... in a very different kind of way because you sense yeah. how much more systemic it is. Yeah, and like you kind of mentioned it, the films that we also saw like regarding World War II, like now I think about it, most of it had was showing stuff that happened after the fact. Like even this movie, the first two acts is like, we don't get to see them do these things. We see the aftermath. 
Uh, like even in a like a, a beautiful life, like yes, he's in the camp, but we don't see anyone like die. We see a we see a mountain of corpses. So like wow, that's what happened to them, but we don't see how that happened. Right. Or in this one, it's like literally thirty minutes of like wow, they we're doing shenanigans, Nazi shenanigans. It's like oh, fuck the. The the one thing that maybe um, I don't know where Jason's going to take it, but just because we're talking about shots and all that, also another thing that I saw with the interviews that I saw afterward, this is the last film the director made. That uh, the the director uh, and he also wrote this, and apparently um, his he his wife and him were like a pretty big duo. Or at least that's what the I think the director of photography or uh, I think it's the one who was saying it, and she died like right before they started filming. So it's almost like the director kind of finished the film and was that that's it, don't want to keep doing this or you know. So that to me also kind of made me think. Of course, I saw that interview after. Um, after I saw the movie, but it's like if he just lost his wife filming it, if you got grief yourself, just you know, I can only imagine how he is, you know, deciding how to film certain things and the, you know, the the mother and the kids and then the possible loved one and stuff like that. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there since we were talking about you know not just characters but lining up certain shots and stuff well you know on another um sort of uh historical uh sort of uh not serendipitous but like things that are in alignment the director was born in 1933 you know so at like the height of this war he's like around the age of the protagonist the kid in this in this story which is kind of interesting you know what i mean so he was yeah. in Russia at this time, and he was this age uh, when all this stuff was going down. And I don't know if he was in Belarus or not, but, I mean, he definitely experienced the war, which kind of brings me to a point that, you know, I, I really love to study and research uh, the Second World War because the whole world was pulled into it. So we, we often get all these different stories, like Dino kind of said, from China or Japan or wherever – you get all these different stories that are all lined up because they're all in the same time frame and they're all like vastly different, but mostly they're all about survival and how they had to deal with this circumstance that the whole world was dragged into. You know what I mean? And it feels like in everything that we watch and experience, at least here in cinema club, it feels like nobody was quite ready for it. You know what I mean? Like the devastation, like even though like we knew we were going to war, you know, and knew like what war does, uh, and, and the first world war wasn't that, you know, wasn't that uh, long ago before this one, you know, really just a generation. It, it's still like every it just seems like nobody was prepared for how devastating on every level this war was going to be and how it was going to take everything that everybody had to get through it. You know, even if you like listen to the stories of like people who were in the U.S. at the time who weren't like affected directly i mean outside of having like loved ones off at war which is huge but like when you hear about those war efforts of people like oh yeah we didn't have shoes because we had to send all the rubber to the war or you know we had to collect aluminum and send it off and we had to sew shirts and stitch things together and send off rations and like everybody was affected so there's so many different stories that like uh world war ii covered and every culture and you know it's uh, and so, one of those things you can't research enough. There's always new uh, information. The, and the the interesting with that, just to the you were saying sending it, other than in Hawaii where you know Pearl Harbor and they got bombed, the whole war was not fought on U.S. soil, right? Hmm. The actual, you know, so there there's like this. We know it also from the perspective of like, you know, gotta buy the stamps. You know, we're we're cutting these. You know, we're we're doing all this stuff so that we can send nylon, so that we can make parachutes, so that we can send everything out there to the to the front. 
Whereas places like Russia and Japan and France and all that, like the war was fought there in their houses, in their farm lands, in their, you know. So it's just, again, it's there's what we kind of know, what we've kind of studied. And then there's also like, oh, yeah, there's, oh, and also there's genocide all over the place. <laughs> like, you know, just like this idea of of just like, yeah, every single civilization has had one or another form of genocide. And in World War II, there's been genocide from different areas as well, and encampments and torture, you know, like even the Japanese camps here, you know, that was something that, you know, even even talking to my aunt here that I think, I think we watched, I, I forget what movie I watched with her, but I think it was uh, one of the movies that was World War II that we saw. But, and she was like, about the Japanese internment camps, right? And she was like, we didn't know about it until like, she was like, I, we had no idea. And she was like, until after college, she was like, she had no idea. So that's like wow. 69, you know, and I mean, then again, right? She was down here in Ramona, which is a farm town. And I mean, she went to UCSD, San Diego, but that's, you know, 69, 70. So it's again, like where, like if your country is not putting that information out there, Unless no, you were in the, unless you were in those communities that were with Japanese people or in up in San Francisco or stuff like that, why? How would you know? Why would you know? Right? You know, like, I just found out that um, Terminal Island down in Long Beach, um, <laughs> which is like an island now where there, uh, I think maybe there was a prison there at one point. I think it's a Coast Guard base now. Uh, it used to be an internment camp for Japanese people. That was like what the island was purposed for at the time. Like, what? So, you know, there's so much weird hidden history around that and around World War II in general. Like, we'll never, I don't think any one person will ever get to like the true bottom of what this thing was really, you know, about. You know what I mean? Like, it was, uh, it was crazy. Uh, Let's uh, switch gears just a little bit. I know we did talk about uh, cinematography and stuff like that and, you know, kind of how it pulls you in and it's different and it's sort of shot in a way that makes you think documentarian uh, point of view. But uh, did you guys have any other thoughts about the cinematography that you wanted to share? It, it did remind me in, in terms of movies that, are, that, that came to mind. Uh, I don't know if y'all have watched son of saul i think it was like the foreign language oscar submission about four to six years ago somewhere around there mm -hmm. and set in if i'm not mistaken set in the same time period um but it also kind of i'm now thinking oh wow it must be greatly inspired by this film because a lot of the long shots and the way the camera moves and follows its you know main characters like eerily similar to what this film seems to have have done, um, and I'm also just—I mean, we kind of not in the same vein, but like we just watched a Fantastic Woman. I just really love <laughs> where we're just like in the headspace of that main character so uncomfortably long that you get to really sense all of the range of emotions that they're, they're going through or they had. And it's a really through. difficult thing to execute, isn't it? Yeah. Like that's not an easy thing to execute on film. Like we watch, like you said, we watched it happen in two movies back to back and it's still hard to put your finger on how they did it all the time. You know what I mean? Cause it's such a, it's such a tight rope to walk, you know, to get yeah. the audience into the headspace of a character, like as eloquent as they did it in the last two films, you could always go like, you know, in somebody's head, you know, but these movies did it like, th these movies sort of did it on the surface. Fantastic Woman was a little bit more stylized, obviously. So um, there, there's, uh, there's two shots for me that really kind of, I mean, cause all the other shots we've kind of seen here and there, of um 
of kind of like the grittiness of war, the mud, you know, the the kidding, the, you know, seeing, you know, the despair in people's faces, which this, again, did it on a completely other, you know, another level. Yeah. But there's the shot where the boy and the girl, it's after it's been raining and all that, and then they start shaking the trees to, like, yeah. get more water, you know, to, like, kind of clean off or whatever. So they're just going around and shaking tree trunks. And just it's like the one moment where it's kind of like they're not even, I think, a handful of moments of them just like playing or them enjoying themselves, right? Yeah. And like that was one of them. And there's just this beautiful shot of her kind of, I think, arms out and the the droplets are falling and maybe a little rain. And there's a freaking rainbow. It's like in the 80s and they're able to get this shot just like, you know, kind of just like we're doing this, boom, we got it. And so there's that shot that I'm just like, I don't know how you do that, masterful. What the the other thing the the photography guy was saying that we had such great luck, God help us, help us, because he made the fog stay around. So like they were using, they were filming with not just like the location, but the environment. They weren't adding all this other stuff. And then the, that final shot of the of the platoon or the uh, Parisians is that what they call them per, per, Parisian or something partisan um, partition at, at the very yeah when they're walking through the woods and the the boy is like hey I don't know if you guys noticed but there is a new recruit it was this weird shot of almost like bespoke you know it, it's it's his face just like the horror. And right behind him, it's someone dressed just like him. So they were doing that whole like uh, rewinding thing, and I thought it was going to be a shot of him again as just like newly recruit, but it was a new recruit, but wearing the same clothes, same hat, and having the suitcase on the backpack. I don't know if you if you guys noticed that, because then they're even like, "Hey, the new recruit." He was no longer new recruit. He was weathered at that point. But anyway, so the new recruit is uh, last, and then the the main character, he's running into line. And then the camera that you think, oh, they're, he's going to follow them through the woods, is like, nah, let me take this camera in 1980 and walk through the woods, through the, like, narrow trees and everything, and which seemed kind of high as well. And I'm just like, whoever's on that is just, killing it of able to just like walk and like go up and down with a camera through the woods and then i'm like oh where is this gonna just end in the woods it's like no walks all the way through the woods and it's snowing like and that's in the 80s and it's no like cgi no nothing and then what i found out was it had been snowing the whole film i think took nine months to shoot maybe a little bit more but that it had been snowing, and so they used like uh, heat turbines or whatever, and melted the snow on the one side. So then, when they went through the woods, they got into the snowy area. But it was it was just wild. Like, it's it's wild that like just the practical, like right, like practical effects is what you know. We we're so much. I mean, where's Dino Sidebar? There's a Dino Sidebar somewhere here. But, uh, <laughs> there we go. Classic. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the, uh, we're, we're so used to, like, MCU movies, everything. Like, it's this, we got we to gotta have a car chase in this beat. There's going to be a shootout in this beat. There's going to be a cyclone come down from the skies in this beat, you know everything's got to be, right? Mission Impossible, Transform. So to be able to see, like, just good old-fashioned camera tricks, practical tricks, is just, to me, is one of the best things. Because then I'm like, how did they do that? I know it wasn't CGI. I know ILM was not part of this. How were they able to accomplish this stuff? So those were, like, two shots that I just completely... Um, Definitely. are stuck in my head. 
All right, great. Um, let's uh, jump into final thoughts then, shall we? Um, whoever wants to speak up first, take it away. Go for so, it. Um, oh, um, uh, kind of the, I to uh, JP started this whole convo with about he didn't see it as a he didn't expect to see a Hitler joke. Honestly, like I did not think that the way this, I think because it is such a, such a, if we, I think we might've even talked about this. Oh no, no, no. That was something else that happened in my life. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was, at a, I was at, a, no. at a dinner party and we were talking about like conversation starters and we got into questions from, I'm going to say his name wrong. P-R-O-U-S-T. Can someone say that to me? Post? Proust. So questions from Proust. And they're like yeah. very heady, you know, questions that get to the root of somebody. I, I at least that's what I'm assuming because they're very intense questions. Anyway, I feel like one of those kind of questions that we get thrown out maybe in the last 10 years is, uh, you know, if you could go back in time and kill baby Hitler, would you do it? And like the film, like I'm wondering, like, are you the film that started this whole thing, like this whole conversation or this question? Because I was very thrown away. I was like, oh wait, are you? Is that what you're getting at right now? Is that? Oh, is this what it actually is? Mm -hmm. And for me, and I thought maybe this will be the the moment where, and because I guess deep down I'm ruthless as fuck, but like, it, I was like, oh, this is the moment where I'm gonna relate to the character. Like, you're gonna kill baby Hitler, and it like pauses in that moment and doesn't really answer it um to me which is which is weird and i hope is wrong because of how i strongly i believe in i guess murdering hitler <laughs> but <laughs> it sounds so terrible but, <laughs> but i go i go um wow is this hope is this is this whole film after taking us through all the carnage and brutality really leaving on a note of hope or or did they just purposely cut one second away from the character making the decision i assume everyone would make but maybe not maybe i'm alone in this and i'm just revealing too much of myself <laughs> but i was just like is this hope like what how y'all I, that's the thing that it left me of like with kind of a question of like, wait, wait, wait. I thought after all this that the character's been through, that this answer would be so simple, but it's not. Mm. And that made me kind of question my humanity and my my thought process. And then just sidebar before before I, I let go of this is I don't think I could be wrong or maybe I've forgotten. I don't think I've ever seen the um, Hitler, the liberator propaganda, like poster in a film. Um, so again, just like another big takeaway of just like the spread of misinformation or propaganda um, and how that's used and just where we live now and how even things that are known to be true can sometimes be called not true uh it's just it's so insane and it's just crazy to see how twisted seemingly factual things have gotten yeah that's a fact for sure um jp why don't you go ahead and uh drop your final thought <sighs> well i don't know it's funny because like I, I just want to touch upon the baby hilly thing just a, just a little bit just a little bit longer for um, sure but like uh, I think it's because like uh, the scene like as so out of it as it was for me, because like in hindsight, like because we know the aftermath is like yes you would, but then you know uh, I think like it kind of mirrors like the scene re like right before it was like you had everyone up in arms like we have the Nazis corners we have the bad guys like they have nowhere else to go, and now the resolve was like wait. We are gonna kill them, but how? And you know, and you know, the humane thing was just to end it. No suffering. We're not gonna do onto them what they did onto our children, but they were this close to doing it. And they they fucked with them mentally right before they they ended it. 
So, but I don't know. I don't know. I just thought that was an interesting scene. Uh, it was actually one of the few scenes, like as terrible as that scene is. Like uh, that was one of my favorite scenes. Was that one fight? Was that scene underneath the bridge? But my mm -hmm. final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I probably would kidnap baby Hitler and like send him to Canada. <laughs> but this is this is the butt thing. Like, hopefully it will just arch into a different universe where like hopefully Canadian Hitler like life is better and like not some mecha Hitler replaces it. You know what I'm saying? Is like because no good deed goes unpunished, and I'm sure like every fucking um sure there's a ray bradbury book or two about it too or it's like it's like no uh, if you thought you if you thought you're doing good think again you know or like an even worse hitler happens or something i don't know but my final thoughts um as great as this movie is and as beautiful it is absolutely not i would <laughs> never rewatch this film i would sooner rewatch the other films that we've seen so far regarding world war ii than this one oh. this one like i'm gonna again like just a, a straight up warning for a recommendation to anyone if you like seeing the protagonist being treated absolutely god awful go through the worst thing in life have at it you're a fucking sadist but it's beautiful that alan <laughs> so Great film, not for me, never again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, Dino, well, uh, JP, you hit us up? have one <laughs> or come and see? Which one would you yeah. watch? Okay, okay, okay. Like I said, great film, never would see it again. Havoc, it's not even a film. It's not even an experience. It's a, okay. it's, it's a regrettable decision is what that was. <laughs> that's good all right uh final thoughts i you know like in talking about the different scenes again i do want to rewatch this uh about the propaganda of the hitler thing I, if we've seen it in a movie it's been up on a wall right that propaganda the liberator or whatever mm. but it's very interesting speaking of propaganda just the power of shooting the the poster right like we haven't touched on that but just its image right it's everything is about presenting power and you know everything that has to go with alternative facts and just like i believe this or whatever and propaganda in general it's so powerful of like and other other medias have talked about it i think in v for vendetta which i know graphic novel in that movie but just the idea of like an image is more, you know, sometimes carries more power than an actual person, right? So just the symbolism, right? Like he knows he's not going anywhere, right? Like what does he have left? Like here's a picture of Hitler. This is the close, I'm the closest I'm going to get to doing something in this war, it seems like. So yeah, take a shot at Hitler. And yeah, I totally forgot also about the rewinding of time all the way to the. And do we know if that was actually baby Hitler picture or is that is that just? No, that a... actually is. Uh, a oh, photograph wow. of him and his mother. Yeah, that's even more powerful. I was, I was like, I think they have pictures of him, but just you know, just wasn't sure. Um, so yeah, that yeah that final like everything was really powerful and just when i thought i was like okay this can't go any further like you've messed up my head enough like how much farther can you go and they do the shooting of that and it's like okay you're showing all the footage uh actual footage of you know concentration camps and everything and then hitler and processions and all that and then rewinding that, and then there's even more. It, yeah, there's so much to still unpack of this. Um, and just final bit, because I, I did see an interview of the actor, and he talked about that in that scene, like he was so cold that he wasn't really able to feel his 
his hands anymore when he had to shoot the pictures. And again, they were using live ammo and stuff that he's shooting the pictures. And he was saying it was ricocheting on, on him. And as a kid, he didn't even realize that. And he was like, it was so cold that you don't really feel that pain. And then he said, and once your hands start to warm up again is when the pain comes rushing in. So mm -hmm. part of it is him just like actually uh, freaking just feeling pain and agony as a kid. And, and it's mind blowing. It's like stuff that you don't put kids through that thing in movies. What are we doing? Uh, but the actor also did talk about that through the audition process, which he just randomly got picked. He wasn't even auditioning that before he met the director, they sat him down and made him watch about two hours of Hitler footage and of like the concentration camp footage. And then they met him, they got him in a room with a director and I guess the director offered him tea and cookies and like, he, as a kid, he's like, I, I, I just, I can't eat cookies. Like you just made me sit through two hours of, of that. So yeah. like, talk about a director like to, to a little kid doing that. Like that is mind blowing. So anyway, I would recommend this to movie buffs, war buffs, commie buffs, just it's, uh, it's up there. I, it's really up there. It's, it's, it needs to be uh, seen more, I feel like. So that's my final thoughts. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with a lot of that, Dino. Uh, Michaela, take it away. I thought this was a very beautiful film. I, It's been a while since I've seen something that like I want to revisit, even though I didn't particularly like the story. You know, because like, <laughs> I think it's like, one of the roughest, like, violent scenes in it that's just, like, so, like, but, like, unlike a lot of films where I can usually, like, turn away and, like, close my eyes and just be like, okay, is it over? Like, this one, like, it really, like, grabs your attention in such a way that you can't look away. So, like, and that is what the art of cinema, like, that's what the art of cinema is. So, like, if you really are into cinema and you want to see good filmmaking, this is an excellent example mm. of that. Because there's just so much to, like, dig through in this. You know, it's it's... Definitely a gem of its own cut. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, I guess that leaves me. Uh, this movie is a it's kind of a hard one to tackle out of like m most of the war movies that I've seen because, like I said, it is it's pretty for me at least it was pretty draining, man. It's pretty draining because it's like you're watching, especially watching kids go through this. And, uh, you know, to piggyback off of what Dino said, like, I mean, I'm sure this may not have been a SAG experience, you know what I mean, for these kids, like, freezing out there. But I was thinking about that when they were, like, crawling through the mud. I was like, man, this is this is a lot, you know, and I'm, it looks very cold yeah, out oh, here quick, right now. Quick, quick on the, on the, just quick on the mud, just because mm -hmm. you mentioned it. He said that, like, that's actual, like, a freaking mud thing. And then he first had the like a a, a wetsuit underneath, mm -hmm. and the the kid actor now he was like, yeah, you know they had me in a in a wetsuit, so you know I wouldn't get like bacteria or anything infection. And then I guess the director was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm you you gotta take that off. I need you to like feel the the actual wow. mud and be uncomfortable. And I guess the actor said that the director was on like a plank of wood. And had tied like his pants and all that, but even the director fell in the mud, and like everyone just got completely swamped up. And um, oh, yeah, luckily no one got infected with anything, I guess. Anyway, that's, that's really good information because I was thinking like, man, I don't know what it's like in Belarus, but are they are they going to get leeches? Like what, you know? And then the, the girl like she jumped, and also by this point of the movie, I was so drawn in. I wasn't always thinking about it as a movie. I was like, man, like, these poor yeah. people, like, what they had to go through just to survive. And, like, the girl was in a dress, and she jumped into this mud to go after him or whatever, and it was a lot. I felt so bad uh, for her. She's like, ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah. I'm like, she's 
swallowing that water. Like, you know, and, and by this time, they haven't had anything to eat. They're very weak. They've been traveling for some time, you know. Um, and then they're dealing with this tragic situation, and then they're, you know, bogged down by the the water. And I just kept thinking, like, at any given point, I feel like the average person would just give up right here. I, or I feel like a lot of people would just give up. Like, I'll just lie into this mud and let it take me. Uh, what I recommend this movie, that, that's a, a really tough question because I feel like, I, even though I really liked it, and I think it's a masterpiece, and I think there's a lot to learn from it, I think there, in many ways, as a filmmaker, just as a student of history, um, like the psychology of war, you know, I, I don't feel like I could recommend this to anyone with like a good conscience, you know, not because I don't think, like, there, like I, I just don't, because it's just, it's a hard one to deal with, you know, and I don't think the average person sits down to watch a movie to see something like this. Now, like you said, if they're a film buff or we're talking about war movies or, you know, I know they're equipped to deal with it, but the regular, you know, person, I wouldn't recommend it. Although, I do agree with, uh, I believe Michaela said, like, I just wish more people would see this movie. I just wish more people, like, had the, you know, the means to experience this movie, the, the wherewithal to get to it. Uh, I, I wish it was more accessible Let me put it that way. I wish this movie could be more accessible because um, it really is like a gem. It's, it's a rare, it's, it's a rare find. I feel like. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, that's my take on this movie. I did really enjoy it. I give it two thumbs up. It's, it's a masterwork in how to like play your audience as a filmmaker. I mean, seeing like a violin, he just played us and got us to feel everything he wanted us to feel. So cool. But, to him on that. Hmm? But do you think he was like he that was his purpose? Like I feel there are some filmmakers that are trying to play the audience, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you think the director that's what he was trying to do, to play the audience or make them feel like I feel like play the audience to me sounds like he intentionally is trying to like push you one way or another. Mm -hmm. Like uh, no, that's not what I meant. I, I meant yeah. more just like him trying to play with our emotions or get us to feel what he wants us to feel when he wants to feel right. it. But not, yeah, not in a, not mischievous and not like, you know, no, forcing no, no, or no. anything. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 nothing like cool. that. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's my final thought on the film. Um, I suppose someone else has something for us to see next week, so I'm just going to ask it. Steve's not here. Uh, what do you got for us next week? Who, me? Yes, that's me. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so, two options. Opción número uno. Mujeres al borde de un ataque de nervios, which is women on the verge of a nervous breakdown, which is also a Pablo, uh, Pablo, uh, Pedro Almodovar film, since you guys seem to like uh, the the other one I had picked before, I was like, oh, this is one of his earlier films. You guys might enjoy that. Or... To it's also getting it, turned into like a television show. What? Mm -hmm. They did, or are they? I can't remember. It's turning into what now? A TV show. Oh, yeah. Nice. Um, or, if we want to be more modern, but also still supporting the Latin air community, um, Nightmare Alley. Because it's uh, Guillermo del Toro. Mm -hmm. So Nightmare Alley would be two. And uh, Mujeres would be one. And uh, yeah, so that's one or two. Okay. So one or two. And Mujeres has a very young Antonio Banderas. In it. So yeah, take a moment to come up with a number in your head. And then uh, after I do the countdown, you're either going to do one finger or two fingers. Everyone, uh, everyone's all set? All set. All right. I'll count it down and uh, then you guys go. Three, two, one, reveal. Oh, is it a tie? Oh, that's a tie. Oh, all right. 
So what I'm going to flip a coin then. Yeah, I was just uh, that. Heads is mujeres and uh, tails is uh, whatever Ali. And it's heard. So we're going to see mujeres this movie. Mujeres al borde de un ataque de nervios. Women on the verge also, of a nervous breakdown. Yeah, which might have also been a... Um, they might have made it into a musical before the TV show. I don't know. But anyway, so I think that's it, right? So for everyone here... Where are we? Do, 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 do. So we that will be all for Oye Dimelo Cinema Club. Michaela, JP, Jason, Raymond, y Dino. I hope you guys enjoy this. And uh, join us next time for Mujeres al Borde de un Ataque de Nervios. Bye, everyone. Bye, 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 bye.